We are WNST, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, Baltimore positive. We are uh, officially getting into March. February was long enough, and I uh, can't wait for baseball at the end of the month. There is a rumor that Luke Jones and I may be sunning ourselves down in Florida later on this month. Uh, we are going to be bringing the Maryland Crab Cake Tour back online after Crab Cake Row wore me out. Back in February, the Maryland Lottery has given us these 10 times the cash tickets to give away our friends at Window Nation in conjunction with Jiffy Lube Multicare and now newest sponsor, Liberty Pure Solutions and uh, the clean water that I drink on a daily basis. Put us back out on the road again. Um, my friend Wendy Bronfine from Curio Wellness and Foreign Daughter joined us on uh, day one. I, I think she was on the uh, doubting side of whether I could actually make it 40 hours of live radio. Wendy, I was so inspired by all of that and your visit with uh, James Piper Bond and other folks, uh, uh, your friends from the Enoch Pratt Library, Megan McCord. I'm going to do live radio again. I'm signing back up. They're pulling me back in, and we're going to be doing Fadley's Fridays on days when the Orioles are home from 2 until 5 with a crab cake and a cocktail and who knows, some flavor gummies from Cure. Who knows, right? Adult use is online now. And uh, so I'm getting in on the spirit. How are you? Are you going to opening day? I am good, and I think I am going to opening day. See, I knew you would be. You're on the bandwagon. I haven't been to opening day, I mean, in a very, very long. I mean, it might have been since, like, you know, high school or something like that. We should do that together. I mean, like, like this is an all in thing. Like we're, we've been talking all month and how much fun this is going to be and all that. Do, 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 so, you know, you had a uh, can of blitz. Is there a bait, you know, is there some peanut butter, strawberry baseball thing y'all go come up with here to have some fun, you know, some grand slam grape. I'm, I'm just, I'm just an to, idea machine to, for to you be today. to be previewed later. I'll say no, <laughs> no spoilers yet. You're like a baseball player, bull during me, dur- bull during me, right? We can we'll talk about that later. I'm not here to talk about that. Um, Wendy, of course, is the uh, chief brand officer and our chief cannabis officer here uh, for all things the future. So, you know, uh, in regard to, I did a whole segment on CFG Bank Arena and going down to the journey, Toto, Night, and all that. We can have fun with that and even promote CFG Bank Arena a little bit, but I wanted to talk to you about gummies because, I mean, for the longest time, brownies, a joke, you know, in movies, then Colorado comes online and we saw every little bit that would come when somebody's dog would get into, I mean, crazy stuff that would go on, but we've come a long way here. And certainly you've come a long way. And I would say the one thing about your products that I will, uh, I will die on the hill for would be how good the gummies taste when you get them. And I think to myself, These taste almost as good as like when my dad got me a butter rum lifesaver back in 73. And I'm thinking flavors have come a long way, but I still drink hydrate products that taste like cough syrup. And they're still awful flavored. And I don't tell anybody awful flavored stuff out there. I just think that's something with your company you kind of have gotten right. And I know it's something that you personally are really it's your jam. You dig it. Yeah. No, thank you for that shout out. It's so true. No, we are. We are fairly anal on the flavor front. I will not deny that. Um, And that's because we go through a lot of behind the scenes trialing to optimize that flavor before um, we produce it. And that happens kind of before it's infused and after it's infused, right? Because cannabis itself, whether um, it's just kind of a THC or CBD or other cannabinoid based infusion, or if it's terpenes, which add a different and additional level of flavor, um, they they kind of can counteract the magic you're working on. And so it's really about figuring out the right flavors that can blend with that and testing it once you've um, infused it to know that it still tastes as good. And so we have, we have people who trial um, after we've infused an active product to give us feedback to know that the the flavor's on the money and if it's not then we got to dial it in do you get anything really bad i mean do you, you know what i mean is there 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 are times where you get some no 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 we can't sell this this is terrible and and i would say for anything in the beginning eras of the the plant that you grow but you know part of it was just sort of like tastes like dirt tastes like you know ground up awfulness right like in a general sense and then May any of those products that were associated with that, whether it was butter, chocolate, name anything you want, you'd be like, still kind of tastes like it, you, you know, not like something that would be more pleasurable than it. 
Yeah, no, nothing really too bad. Usually when we're trialing it, we like to, we start with levels, right? So like, say it's going to be the juicy watermelon, right? So there'll be like, I'll loosely call it like a high, medium, low, right? So is it like two in your face? Is it not enough? Is it right? Is it just right? But that's, that's a kind palate of thing, right? Because some people love Jolly Ranchers. They make me, you know, they make me all. And some people like tropical flavored lifesavers. And some people like sort of tart, right? Like I, it is, my wife loves tart, tart lime. She likes tart strawberry. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Strawberry's <laughs> like supposed to be sweet, you know? But like she would drink a tart strawberry milkshake and I'm like, that's weird. So we all have different palates, right? Like, but I find well, yours to be more, I don't say tropical because they're like pineapple and watermelon. They just sort of lend themselves to be more like that. But I find them to be not overly sweet, but just, um, enjoyable. Not, yeah. I got to get through this and get, get done it. Yeah. I mean, the, my biggest shocker is I guess I'm, I'm, I like a lot of flavors, so nothing's particularly offensive to me, but um, pineapple and coconut are two that like people are on like one side of the fence or the other. Those have been discussed a lot when we talk. Some people are like, I do not like those. Um, I think the grapefruit agave flavor is one of my favorites that we do because I mean, sometimes when you eat things that are flavored or candy, right? Like they don't actually taste like like a watermelon blow pop doesn't really taste like eating a piece of watermelon, right? But like we all accept that that's kind of watermelon flavor. But this grapefruit one, if you like grapefruit, I mean, it tastes the same as like eating fresh grapefruit. It is, I think it's I've great. hated grapefruit my whole life. It's oh, amazing you could it. bring this up, you know? <laughs> See? See it's a Jen, Jen and I got into this about mango flavoring and like watermelon flavoring and different things like, like strawberry. She prefers tart. I don't. But when it comes down to it for you, I and I guess as a, a new business, I mean, a new industry, really, for what you're trying to do. It, it is different than Lifesavers, where they've been making them for 60 years in whatever way they make candies to try to create consistency. I know consistency, not just along the taste, but also the delivery of the, the medicinal value and whatever you're trying. And, and even that's changed with THC and CBD and the other availabilities and adult and you know, more extra strength that, that would be available if you have a medicinal card. I, I would say for all of that, if it's not selling or if people don't like it, they won't come back and buy it a second time, right? Like, so you're still, it's a little early on to figure out like whether you have a big winner or not. Am I, am I right in saying that? Because there's so many flavors you could have. I think right across all, this, all of our versions of Choose Now, I think we have about 15 flavors. Um, we don't, nothing that we've really felt like, you know, has to be retired, but definitely seen kind of which ones start to become more popular than others. And, or if there's even some sort, some level of seasonality to certain strains, I mean, to certain flavors. Um, but like mango in the beginning was super popular. Um, I think today probably black cherry might eclipse mango a little bit that people just like a cherry flavor more than a mango flavor, but they're still really popular. And I would tell you also, I've I mean, never had any of these flavors in any of your gum, you know, like when I think of yours, pineapple, orange, lemon, lime, those were the early food. rollouts though, right? Those were your original kind of flavors, right? Well, pineapple, all the ones you just described are in the Terp Chew line. Mm -hmm. So like the three originals were the THC, was mango um the high thc low cbd was um blood orange turmeric and then the high cbd low thc was lemon honey um but then we add we've added i mean there's the grapefruit agave there's white peach juicy watermelon elderberry hibiscus black cherry vanilla um strawberry basil this reminds me of being in a snowball stand, like in a yeah. hot day in May and saying, yeah. you know, when are you, when are you coming egg custard from? That's what I say. I said that to Jen the other day. So when are you going egg custard? I mean, that's, that would be, that would be an ultimate Baltimore nod is if yeah. you would do that. That, you that know? is, that is so true. Well, it's just an idea. I mean, I'm I, an idea. I mean, I'm, so I'm not opposed. <laughs> these are ideas that you all come up with for all of this. I would say when you said mango was the original one, I'm trying to educate myself and uh, go, go deeper into the rabbit hole just on the topic. Masking the flavor of awfulness in the beginning, was that an original goal for you or had they sorted that out in the industry before you came online with it? 
No, so, okay, so here, here's kind of like the backstory. So when we wanted to get into the Chew space, we hired a consultant who had built his career at Hershey. And so he came in and educated us on how you make these types of products and the um, kind of the approach to make them well, to have good consistency, all that stuff. So the first thing we did was we made um, three different textures of what the Chew would be. And we had an all team meeting and we gave everyone, they weren't infused, they were just placebos. Everyone had samples, it was like over like probably at least a hundred of us. And they filled out surveys and like, do you like texture one, two or three? And so then we, and then the winning texture became the consistency of the chew. And then our chew flavors came from starting literally by looking at flavor trends broadly. Like what are the top flavors of anything people buy anywhere? Mango, like orange, lemon were all very popular and leading flavors. I think mango was, mango or orange, one of them was the number one flavor that is just used for flavored things. Um, and then naturally after that, it was just adding things. It really kind of started in the beginning. I was a, I, I was very much a stickler for avoiding um, the vulnerabilities of eating the wrong thing. So in the beginning, it was really about never adding a flavor whose color could look like a different flavor. So if we had this like dark red-ish color that was blood orange, and we had orange that was mango and yellow that was lemon honey, then if we were going to add, we needed to it needed to visually appear very different so that you could not mix up what you thought you were taking, particularly because you might buy things that are different. If you're flavors. making three different aspirin you wouldn't make them all look at the same color in the same right. way if you right if you wanted to distinguish okay understood yeah so try to keep them really visually different so you can't mix stuff up even though obviously they come in their own bags and all that stuff but you know you don't know what someone does when they get home with their stuff so um that's sort of like kind of all of what happened behind the scenes and then you know the category is huge here in any other state um i mean but even it doesn't it's not even like necessarily a cannabis thing I and mean, if you go into a drugstore and you look you walk down the otc like aisle between vitamins and otc meds everything can come in a gummy now because it's just a dosage form that people like and it makes it easier for people to be compliant with a, a behavior and so obviously this all started in medical so it was more about how can you deliver this in a way that is pleasurable to the user particularly those who didn't want to smoke wendy bronfon is here continuing to educate us i'm wearing my i'm a blunt person shirt i i'm gonna get my orange back on and get ready for my purple and get all that going. Uh, you can find her and uh, the Curio Wellness team over at Far and Daughter here locally, uh, just south of Timonium Road and York Road. Uh, the frontage has these cool shirts along with all sorts of sort of health items and also in the back, massage. Uh, there's a whole wellness center going on there, including a cannabis dispensary uh, that we try to educate folks about here. And uh, you can always learn more out uh, online as well. So from a gummy standpoint, it's one thing to stand on the lawn as I did last summer during a cure concert and went up to an old high school buddy and said, Hey dude, how you been? And he's like, my gummy just kicked in. Hang on. You know, I mean, and like where we are at this point and I'm thinking what kind of gummy, you know, like where, you know, where are we? And I guess that, that is, we, we talk flavors all day long, but then there's just, Hey, I've never had a gummy. I've seen it joked about on my favorite sitcom or I uh, took one and fell asleep one time or whatever. The educational part, especially in your place, if you come to foreign daughter and say, all right, I'm having this issue. I want to sleep better. I'm having this issue. I want to relax more on a Friday night. I don't want to drink wine. Um, and I'll tell you this. I made a couple of um, – my wife and I have this thing. We go to Wise Markets. We see limes. We think tequila. It was National Tequila Day the other day. Made some margaritas, which they're very tasty. And then I woke up with a little – that thing about four or five in the morning. I'm like, ah, oh, that last shot that I put in that last thing I shook <laughs> up it was stupid of going from two to three. I'm old. And I, you know, the hangover, I, people have a lot of reasons that they would want a gummy on the hill for the cure. Um, and, uh, but, but in a general medicinal sense, people come in, where do you direct them in that way? Because you don't have to smoke it. You don't have to vape. You don't, that, that there is a way here to get, medicine in a gummy format even though we didn't have those with flintstones chewables when i was a kid you know what i mean gummies it really is sort of a right. new newfangled thing we, we didn't grow up as kids taking medicine that way 
Yeah. So, so the original chew line, which we, which we call chews, um, those are, those are all just THC based on the adult use side. They're 10 milligrams. They come in a variety of flavors. Then you've got the terpene infused chews and the terpenes are what give you like a targeted, um, expected effect, right? So the mango and the orange have a terpene blend. That means that you're always going to feel kind of, um, socially on energized alert. Like, I think I've talked about this before. Those are the ones I like to use on a Friday or Saturday night. And this is where I'm going to jump in and tell you, I've never had the mango because the orange was more preferable to me the day I made the decision. And I've just never bought the mango. Yeah. And the orange is delicious. So why would I try the mango? You know, like literally that's what happened. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the pineapple is the other end of the spectrum that has a terpene profile. That's, um, my, very much aligned towards like quieting your mind. Bedtime. Relaxing your I, bedtime for me as a, as a consumer of your product, bedtime and yeah. delicious, more delicious than the orange, even. And that's saying something. Yeah. For me, that one's like, a um, you know, I kind of want to like turn off the day and relax at home, but I'm not necessarily looking to go to sleep, but I'm just kind of, my body gets loose. My, my type a quiets down a little bit. Um, and then the lemon lime sits in the middle in terms of like, you, you, you do have, um, nice body effects, nothing overwhelming. And the uplift you get is not as strong as, um, the mango or the orange. So it kind of, it could serve you any time of day versus, I would recommend that the mango and orange are either used at the beginning of the day, or if you are intentionally trying to be energized for something in the evening. Um, and then, and then you get into like what we call like the effects based solution. So you've got a good night chew, which is the chew the version of our, our tablet. So that doesn't have the pulse release system, but it's going to give you immediate effects to help you fall asleep. And that's a blueberry flavor. And then you've got a good day chew. Um, those are all high CBD lower THC. So think of them as like a functional cannabis where um, a lot more CBD that's giving you inflammation management and some mood uplift, but not a lot of feeling high. Um, when you say chew, you mean gummy, right? Yes. I mean gummy. Perfect. Sorry. Okay. The word chew, but that means gummy. Um, and then um, we're about to, ex oh, well, well, we just, we spent like three weeks talking about, oh, right. So we have our bedroom berry like sexy time chew, um, again, with a terpene profile that's aligned towards those activities. And then um, we're about to broaden our move line, which we've talked about the topicals a lot for uh, pain relief with a mobility um, relief formula so that you can do a chew for systemic needs of, of, ma of managing pain. Now that's a CBD product, correct? It's, it's, so it's, there's more THC than CBD, but there is CBD in it. And then it'll, and it'll live on both the adult use and medical markets. So the, the adult use is, um, at a, at max is out at 10, cause that's, what's compliant there. And on the adult use side, the THC is higher. Both the THC and the CBD are higher, but THC has to be controlled, um, up to 10 milligrams on the adult use side. Did it leave anything out other than spring training and the fact that Luke and I may be running down to Florida for a couple of days and trying to figure this Oreo magic out? But uh, I know it is going to be fun here this year. I think so. Did you enjoy the journey, Toto, uh, experience? Because, look, Mike and I went through this. We actually talked about it on the air. I, I plugged you guys, and I plugged CFG and the arena and Frank and the and the the, the, the pet event they're having in a couple of weeks with our friends at Barks and with uh, with uh, Show Your Soft Side. So I I'm I'm into all of this, but we had like the drunk women. I had the eight drunk women that started drinking around 12. They should have visited you, quite frankly. They would have been way better off with an orange turp chew. I it, totally. Uh, yeah. So we kind of had to like move away a little bit because I didn't really want to hear them sing in open arms in separate ways after I heard them talk over every Toto song. So we had the bad etiquette, folks. But the vault was great. Um, I got to be in Edie Brown's old office and play Papa Shot, which I thought was awesome. And I told the CFG Bank and the Oakview people, I said to Lowell, I'm like, you really need to rename this place to Edie Brown. You have Edie has to have a plaque up on the <laughs> wall here. Um, but I, you know, I love being there. And I so free plug for all of them. I took the picture in front of the Led Zeppelin thing. I went over to the 1962. I was in the other club area downstairs for a while. Um, it's magic in a magic space for me. And I've I've said that from the I loved it when it was an old chicken box, whatever you want to call it. I I love it now, and I love even a bad 
time was a good time because I ran into friends and had we had fun that night. We had dinner with you and your husband was wonderful. Yeah, I mean, it, I so I think I shared this. I was in it for the Toto. I saw Journey at the Classic a few years ago in um, at City Field. Um, I mean, it's like a like a Journey song on the radio at a party. But I at, at a certain point, I said to my husband, like, I I can go whenever. And he was like, You're like the progressive commercial. You're trying. You're old. You're trying to leave. No, no. Here's what happened. I think you're too young for Journey. No, no, I was just I like, think you are. I, you I, know, it was yeah. different for me when I hear Escape. I'm 11 years old in Todd Nerwinski's bedroom. We're dropping the needle. We're singing posters on the wall. You know what I mean? Like, it's just different. I, I was just more like, it's like, I, lo I like all the songs. It's not, I could take or leave seeing it in person and I've seen it before. So I was just more like, it's Sunday night. I'm tired. I don't need to hear them sing every song. Mind you, we did leave at the end. But- um, but like, but Toto is like, you know, they're, they're all studio musicians. Their musicality is another level. The band had so many more pieces to it. I just, it just, I think it's just more audibly interesting. Um, I did was like dying laughing just to myself because I walked in, I walked up the steps and I got to seats and I looked at the stage and everyone was old. And I don't, I intellectually knew that, but like in my head, I only picture like, people from like, say like the Rosanna video. Right, right? you're in the Africa video, right. I was gonna say, you're holding like, the line, completely yeah. Completely caught off guard. <laughs> it was like, wait a second. But um, but no, Steve I, Lukather's hair, he looks a little bit like one of the first six presidents. Like he looks yeah. like he signed the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. But what about the <laughs> fact that they that they have uh, children married to each other? That's oh, they're great. Yeah. yeah. Lukather's daughter's married to, to Jonathan Cain's son. Right. I think yeah. that's the, what the yeah, I, you know, I. God bless all of us geezers and getting together. I mean, Usher's coming, Janet Jackson's coming back, Pearl Jam's coming in for what Springsteen's coming back to Baltimore. So like Timberlake. Yeah. Yeah. Timberlake's coming in. Right. So uh, I'm I'm good. Wendy Braunfein is great. She is our chief cannabis officer, chief brand officer for all things Curio Wellness and Far and Daughter. Stop by, educate yourself. Don't buy the hype. Don't watch the hundred year old videos that the government put out. Uh, learn a little bit about all of this and how it could benefit you. And uh, certainly my wife is a, a recovered cancer person. And I did a big uh, leukemia lymphoma thing last week as well. So all sorts of science going on. And our friends at Curio Wellness are uh, carrying that on in the great spirit right here in uh, Timonium, Maryland. And uh, we appreciate you coming on. All right, next concert, uh, we'll figure out opening day. And here's what I'm not going to go into this on the air because we'll do it. But like, we got to pick a better place for dinner next time. I, I I lost. I'm mad at Evan. I'm telling him I'm mad. I'm not even going to plug the place. But we're going to pick a better place next time because you're going to pick it. it, or Jonathan's going to pick it. I think. I you know. So I thought it was okay. I just won't go back. Oh, okay. No, it was okay. <sighs> I'm not going to go into this on the air. Uh, she is Wendy. I am Nestor. We are WNST AM 1570. Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking all sorts of things. And Baltimore positive as uh, Luke gets ready for opening day.